Amikasin, Wikipedia article audio. Amikasin is an antibiotic used for a number of bacterial infections. This includes joint infections, intra-abdominal infections, meningitis, pneumonia, sepsis, and urinary tract infections. It is also used for the treatment of multidrug resistant tuberculosis. It is used either by injection into a vein or muscle. Amikacin, like other aminoglycoside antibiotics, can cause hearing loss, balance problems, and kidney problems. Other side effects include paralysis, resulting in the inability to breathe. If used during pregnancy it may cause permanent deafness in the baby. Amikacin works by blocking the function of the bacteria's 30s ribosomal subunit, making it unable to produce proteins. Medical Uses Available Forms Amikacin was patented in 1971 and came into commercial use in 1976. It is on the World Health Organization's list of essential medicines, the most effective and safe medicines needed in a health system. The wholesale cost in the developing world is 13.80 to 130 US dollars and 50 cents for a month. In the United States a typical course of treatment costs 25 to 50 US dollars. It is made from canamycin. Amikacin is most often used for treating severe infections with multidrug resistant, aerobic gram-negative bacteria, especially Pseudomonas, Acinetobacter, Enterobacter, E. coli, Proteus, Klebsiella, and Serratia. The only gram-positive bacteria that amikacin strongly affects are Staphylococcus and Nocardia. Amikacin can also be used to treat non-tubercular mycobacterial infections and tuberculosis when first-line drugs fail to control the infection. It is rarely used alone. It is often used in the following situations. Amikacin may be combined with a beta-lactam antibiotic for empiric therapy for people with neutropenia and fever. Liposomal amikacin for inhalation is currently in late-stage clinical trials for the treatment of respiratory diseases, such as cystic fibrosis, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, non-tubercular mycobacterial infections and bronchiectasis. Special Populations Amikacin may be administered once or twice a day and is usually given by the intravenous or intramuscular route though it can be given via nebulization. There is no oral form available, as amikacin is not absorbed orally. In people with kidney failure, dosage must be adjusted according to the creatinine clearance, usually by reducing the dosing frequency. In people with a CNS infection such as meningitis, amikacin can be given intrathecally or intraventricularly. Amikacin should be used in smaller doses in the elderly, who often have age-related decreases in kidney function, and children, whose kidneys are not fully developed yet. It is considered pregnancy category D in both the United States and Australia, meaning they have a probability of harming the fetus. Around 16% of amikacin crosses the placenta. While the half-life of amikacin in the mother is 2 hours, it is 3.7 hours in the fetus. A pregnant woman taking amikacin with another aminoglycoside has a possibility of causing congenital deafness in her child. While it is known to cross the placenta, amikacin is only partially secreted in breast milk. Adverse Effects In general, Amikacin should be avoided in infants. Infants also tend to have a larger volume of distribution due to their higher concentration of extracellular fluid, where aminoglycosides reside. The elderly tend to have amikacin stay longer in their system, 
while the average clearance of amicacin in a 20-year-old is 6L-HR, it is 3L-HR in an 80-year-old. Clearance is even higher in people with cystic fibrosis. Contraindications In people with muscular disorders such as myasthenia gravis or Parkinson's disease, Amicacin's paralytic effect on neuromuscular junctions can worsen muscle weakness. Interactions Side effects of amicacin are similar to those of other aminoglycosides. Kidney damage and ototoxicity are the most important effects, occurring in 1-10% of users. The nephro and ototoxicity are thought to be due to aminoglycosides' tendency to accumulate in the kidneys and inner ear. Pharmacology Amicacin can cause neurotoxicity if used at a higher dose or for longer than recommended. The resulting effects of neurotoxicity include vertigo, numbness, tingling of the skin, muscle twitching, and seizures. Its toxic effect on the eighth cranial nerve causes ototoxicity, resulting in loss of balance and, more commonly, hearing loss. Damage to the cochlea, caused by the forced apoptosis of the hair cells, leads to the loss of high-frequency hearing and happens before any clinical hearing loss can be detected. Damage to the ear vestibules most likely by creating excessive oxidative free radicals. It does so in a time-dependent rather than dose-dependent manner, meaning that risk can be minimized by reducing the duration of use. Amicacin causes nephrotoxicity, by acting on the proximal renal tubules. It easily ionizes to a cation and binds to the anionic sites of the epithelial cells of the proximal tubule as part of receptor-mediated pinocytosis. The concentration of amicacin in the renal cortex becomes ten times that of amicacin in the plasma, it then most likely interferes with the metabolism of phospholipids in the lysosomes, which causes lytic enzymes to leak into the cytoplasm. Nephrotoxicity results in increased serum creatinine, blood urea nitrogen, red blood cells, and white blood cells, as well as albuminuria, glycosuria, decreased urine-specific gravity, and oliguria. It can also cause urinary casts to appear. The changes in renal tubular function also change the electrolyte levels and acid-base balance in the body which can lead to hypokalemia and acidosis or alkalosis. Nephrotoxicity is more common in those with pre-existing hypokalemia, hypocalcemia, hypomagnesemia, acidosis, low glomerular filtration rate, diabetes mellitus, dehydration, fever, and sepsis, as well as those taking antiprostaglandins. The toxicity usually reverts once the antibiotic course has been completed, and can be avoided altogether by less frequent dosing. Mechanism of Action Amicacin can cause neuromuscular blockade and respiratory paralysis. Rare side effects include allergic reactions, skin rash, fever, headaches, tremor, nausea, and vomiting, eosinophilia arthralgia, anemia, hypotension, and hypomagnesemia. In intravitreous injections, macular infarction can cause permanent vision loss. Amicacin should be avoided in those who are sensitive to any aminoglycoside, as they are cross-allergenic. It should also be avoided in those sensitive to sulfite, since most amicacin usually comes with sodium metabisulfite, which can cause an allergic reaction. In general, amicacin should not be used with or just before slash after another drug that can cause neurotoxicity, ototoxicity, or nephrotoxicity. Such drugs include other aminoglycosides, the antiviral acyclovir, the antifungal amphotericin B, 
the antibiotics bacitracin, capriomycin, colistin, polymyxin B, and vancomycin, and cisplatin, which is used in chemotherapy. Amikacin should not be used with neuromuscular blocking agents, as they can increase muscle weakness and paralysis. Resistance Though amikacin can be inactivated by other beta-lactams, though not to the extent as other aminoglycosides, and is still often used with penicillins to create an additive effect against certain bacteria, and carbapenems, which can have a synergistic against some gram-positive bacteria. Another group of beta-lactams, the cephalosporins, can increase the nephrotoxicity of aminoglycoside as well as randomly elevating creatinine levels. The antibiotics chloramphenicol, clindamycin, and tetracycline have been known to inactivate aminoglycosides in general by pharmacological antagonism. Pharmacokinetics The effect of amikacin is increased when used with drugs derived from the botulinum toxin, anesthetics, neuromuscular blocking agents, or large doses of blood that contains citrate as an anticoagulant. Bronchiectasis, bone and joint infections, granulocytopenia, when combined with ticarcillin, in people with cancer, intra-abdominal infections as an adjunct to other medicines, like clindamycin, metronidazole, piperacillin slash tazobactam, or ampicillin slash sulbactam, meningitis, for meningitis by E. coli, as an adjunct to imipenem, for meningitis caused by pseudomonas, as an adjunct to meropenem, for meningitis caused by acetobacter, as an adjunct to imipenem or colistin, for neonatal meningitis caused by Streptococcus agalactii or Listeria monocytogens, as an adjunct to ampicillin, for neonatal meningitis caused by gram-negative bacteria such as E. coli, as adjunct to a third-generation cephalosporin. Potent diuretics not only cause ototoxicity themselves, but they can also increase the concentration of amikacin in the serum and tissue making the ototoxicity even more likely. Quinidine also increases levels of amikacin in the body. The NSAID indomethacin can increase serum aminoglycoside levels in premature infants. Contrast mediums such as iaversol increases the nephrotoxicity and ototoxicity caused by amikacin. Amikacin can decrease the effects certain vaccines such as the live BCG vaccine, the cholera vaccine, and the live typhoid vaccine by acting as a pharmacological antagonist. Amikacin irreversibly binds to 16 srRNA and the RNA binding S12 protein of the 30s subunit of prokaryotic ribosome and inhibits protein synthesis by changing the ribosome's shape so that it cannot read the mRNA codons correctly. It also interferes with the region that interacts with the wobble base of the tRNA anticodon. It works in a concentration-dependent manner, and has better action in an alkaline environment. Chemistry Veterinary use At normal doses, amikacin-sensitive bacteria respond within 24-48 hours. Amikacin evades attacks by all antibiotic inactivating enzymes that are responsible for antibiotic resistance in bacteria, except for aminoacetyltransferase and nucleotidyltransferase. This is accomplished by the L-hydroxyaminobutyroyl amide moiety attached to N1, which blocks the access and decreases the affinity of aminoglycoside inactivating enzymes. Amikacin ends up with only one site where these enzymes can attack, while gentamicin and tobramycin have six. Bacteria that are resistant to streptomycin and capriomycin are still susceptible to amikacin. Bacteria that are resistant to canamycin have varying susceptibility to amikacin. 
resistance to amikacin also confers resistance to canamycin and capriomycin. Resistance to amikacin and canamycin in mycobacterium, the causative agent of tuberculosis, is due to a mutation in the RR's gene, which codes for the 16S rRNA. Mutations such as these reduce the binding affinity of amikacin to the bacteria's ribosome. Variations of aminoglycoside acetyltransferase and aminoglycoside adenyl transferase also confer resistance. Resistance in Pseudomonas aeruginosa is caused by AAC4, which also confers resistance to canamycin, gentamicin, and tobramycin, and resistance in Staphylococcus aureus and S. epidermidis is caused by AAD which also confers resistance to canamycin, tobramycin, and opramycin. Some strains of S. aureus can also inactivate amikacin by phosphorylating it. Amikacin is not absorbed orally and thus must be administered parenterally. It reaches peak serum concentrations in 0.52 hours when administered intramuscularly. Less than 11% of the amikacin actually binds to plasma proteins. It is distributed into the heart, gallbladder, lungs, and bones, as well as in bile, sputum, interstitial fluid, pleural fluid, and synovial fluids. It is usually found at low concentrations in the cerebrospinal fluid, except when administered intraventricularly. In infants, Amikacin is normally found at 10-20% of plasma levels in the spinal fluid, but the amount reaches 50% in cases of meningitis. It does not easily cross the blood-brain barrier or enter ocular tissue. While the half-life of amikacin is normally 2 hours, it is 50 hours in those with end-stage renal disease. The vast majority of amikacin from an IM or 4 dose is secreted unchanged via glomerular filtration and into the urine within 24 hours. Factors that cause amikacin to be excreted via urine include its relatively low molecular weight, high water solubility, and unmetabolized state. Amikacin is derived from canamycin A. While amikacin is only FDA approved for use in dogs and for intrauterine infection in horses, it is one of the most common aminoglycosides used in veterinary medicine, and has been used in dogs, cats, guinea pigs, chinchillas, hamsters, rats, mice, prairie dogs, cattle, birds, snakes, turtles and tortoises, crocodilians, bullfrogs, and fish. It is often used for respiratory infections in snakes, bacterial shell disease in turtles, and sinusitis in macaws. It is generally contraindicated in rabbits and hares because it harms the balance of intestinal microflora. In dogs and cats, Amikacin is commonly used as a topical antibiotic for ear infections and for corneal ulcers, especially those that are caused by Pseudomonas aeruginosa. The ears are often cleaned before administering the medication, since pus and cellular debris lessen the activity of amikacin. Amikacin is administered to the eye when prepared as an ophthalmic ointment or solution, or when injected subconjunctively. Amikacin in the eye can be accompanied by cefazolin. Despite its use their amikacin are toxic to intraocular structures. In horses, amikacin is FDA approved for uterine infections when caused by susceptible bacteria. It is also used in topical medication for the eyes and arthroscopic lavage, when combined with a cephalosporin is used to treat subcutaneous infections that are caused by staphylococcus. For infections in the limbs or joints, it is often administered with a cephalosporin via limb perfusion directly into the limb or injected into the joint. Amikacin is also injected into the joints with the antiarthritic medication adequate in order to prevent infection.
Side effects in animals include nephrotoxicity, ototoxicity, and allergic reactions at IM injection sites. Cats tend to be more sensitive to the vestibular damage caused by ototoxicity. Less frequent side effects include neuromuscular blockade, facial edema, and peripheral neuropathy. The half-life in most animals is 1 to 2 hours. Treating overdoses of amikacin requires kidney dialysis or peritoneal dialysis, which reduce serum concentrations of amikacin, and slash or penicillins, some of which can form complexes with amikacin that deactivate it. 